Welcome back to Money Movers. Last week's weaker than expected jobs report, raising questions about the health of the labor market. That's, of course, as more companies make the move to cut staff this year. Salesforce, Oracle, Microsoft, ConocoPhillips all announcing layoffs this quarter. A World Economic Forum survey from earlier this year suggesting that 41 percent of companies expect to reduce their workforce over the next five years because of AI. Let's bring in Sandbox AQ CEO Jack Hittery. Sandbox AQ provides AI solutions to partners such as Microsoft, Amazon, Google, across industries. Jack, welcome back. It's good to have you. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Carl. Good to see you both. I did note that it's good to see you, that 10.5% rate on youth unemployment and, and wondering if there's a mismatch here between what skills are needed for our AI future and how kids are graduating right now. What do you think? Well, there's definitely a mismatch. You're going to see a number of sectors that will uh, shed jobs uh, due to AI. Uh, you mentioned a few of them. One additional one to look at in terms of losing jobs will be the fulfillment sector, warehouse, fulfillment, e-commerce. If you look at the number of jobs employed in warehouses and fulfillment by Amazon, Walmart, Target, Costco, you're talking about well over 2.5 million jobs just in the United States alone. Uh, that's going to be under very significant pressure, both from software AI, but also as we get to robotics uh, with Tesla, Future AI, many other companies coming into the space, uh, Amazon, Walmart, and others already experimenting with these uh, devices. And you'll see further cuts in the hundreds of thousands there in e-commerce and fulfillment. On the other hand, Sarah, to your point, there are sectors that we're going to see job growth because of AI. And there's certain skills that we definitely need to have folks learn. One of those to start off is cybersecurity. There's 500,000 missing trained people in America for 500,000 open jobs in cyber right now. Uh, and AI is actually increasing the need for cyber workers. So cyber is a good place for jobs. You also, I think, noted healthcare and life sciences. And I wonder if the, the technology is there yet in that industry where that can be a job grower. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, you're seeing the application of AI initially happened on productivity, such as in marketing, customer service, a number of companies laying people off in customer service. But on the healthcare and life sciences side, you're seeing right now already impact of AI on the positive side, increasing the ability to create better diagnostics, uh, better therapeutics, and people will start to live longer. So elder care will actually start to increase. Our longevity, our lifespan in the United States plateaued over the last number of years. We expect it actually to start increasing again, leading to more demand for workers to take care of the elderly, particularly since we have low childbirth rates, you'll need more workers to take care of the elderly as well. So we're seeing an increased demand over the next three to four years because of AI in healthcare and life sciences. More short term, Jack, we were, we were showing some of these survey uh, charts that suggest there's been a slowdown in recent weeks of companies saying they used AI tools to sell a good or service in the last couple of weeks. And I'm wondering if you think um, seasonal tech spending trends year-end budgets, uh, waiting for a new generation of technology will also apply to this sort of AI spending universe. I think there is going to be a surge. Uh, first of all, when you cross AI with cyber, you're going to see a surge there. Uh, NIST, N-I-S-T, a part of the United States government, just came out with new cyber standards. Uh, and again, because of both AI and the new NIST standards, you're going to see a surge in demand for cyber workers coming up in the next months, but also the next years. Another area of surge because of AI is the power sector. Uh, right now, you saw the numbers just coming out from OpenAI and their uh, intention to spend well over $100 billion in data infrastructure. XAI from Elon Musk, same numbers, $100 plus billion, looking like over the next number of years. That means we've got to create and build gigawatts of power. That's going to benefit gas sector, uh, nuclear, as well as solar and batteries. Those are going to need workers starting now. This is not a five-year uh, kind of thing. This is right now. This is happening. And we're going to see a surge in those sectors, including also material science, the materials, the alloys, the battery chemistry to make all that mm -hmm. happen. Uh, and, and that's where we've been working with NVIDIA specifically in that area. What, but, but more broadly to the point of where, where AI is right now on the growth and adoption curve and on just on the spending, the, have you seen any changes in companies that you work with or across the industries 
in terms of their spending and investing around AI and what they're getting out of it? Well, I think we're seeing that the bloom is off the rose of the first wave of AI. Last two and a half years, first wave, a lot of excitement, uh, banks, pharma companies, uh, you know, the United States government trying hundreds of different experiments. The reality is majority of those experiments did not result in the, you know, in the yield that people wanted in productivity. Definitely some uptick in coding productivity. There's no doubt about that with wonderful tools from Microsoft and Claude, from Anthropic and many others. But we're not seeing the across the board. So now's the second wave of AI. This is where we're going to apply AI to the 80% of the GDP, uh, making power, logistics, healthcare, all these, you know, automotive, aerospace. This requires something beyond just chat GPT. You really can't be asking something trained on social media and pictures how to create that next drug. This second wave of AI is just beginning now, and I think we'll see more immediate results in the core of people's businesses, not just in productivity at the margins. You're kind of getting to something that uh, Palo Alto has talked about on our air in the last couple of weeks, and this is the notion that Agentix will be received maybe a little cautiously by the enterprise because there's so much at stake. Uh, the margin for error is so small. Obviously, a cyber company would want to, would probably say that, but I do wonder whether you think uh, the enterprise on Agentix will be a little bit leery. Well, look, again, because the results of the first wave of AI have been mixed, a lot of successes in coding, but less success in some other application areas, I do think Agentic will be very focused. So the success in Agentix will be when a company, a software company, has an Agentic solution for a particular vertical, that's going to be successful. Generic programs may not be as successful in Agentic because, again, Agentic also brings increased cyber uh, attack as as Palo Alto, as Nikesh has talked about. Okay, Jack, appreciate the update, what you're seeing, what you're hearing. Um, really valuable always. Jack Hittery, thank you. Great to see you. You too, from Sandbox AQ.